Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest videos. Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Meetings called to order. Okay, Commissioner Thompson. Um, if we can all just bow our heads for a few seconds. Heavenly Father, I'm just so thankful to be here and to be safe in a world that's in such turmoil. I just want to thank you for the Easter celebration we had a couple of weeks. It was all about you, Lord, and without you, there would be no eternity pathway for us. I pray that you will be on the hearts and the minds of leaders across this world to help them to not want the violence and to harm one another. I pray for a great awakening, Lord, that we will see you instead of things that we don't need to ever look at our eyes on. Lead us in this meeting to do the right thing by the citizens of this county and keep us strong and focused. And I'm just so thankful that we serve a God that is almighty and will always be almighty. In your name I pray, amen. If we could stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is uh, approval of the agenda, and I understand that, uh, Ms. Thompson, you would like for item 7A1, budget member, uh, amendment 23, and Mr. Turner, I understand that you would like to have item number 7B uh, pulled from the consent agenda to be discussed. Is that correct? Correct. Sir. All right. Is that a motion on your behalf? <laughs> Is I'll, a, I'll make a motion to do that. Second. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second it. All in favor signify by uh, saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All right, we have one additional item uh, that has a deadline of May the 1st. Uh, you will have on your desk that item. Uh, and... It pertains to a budget for uh, budget item four. Family it is a, a grant application for the Family Justice Center. We'd like to add that to the agenda, right. please. So we're going to move those items, uh, 7A, 7B, and this new budget item will now be 9A, B, and C. All right. Subject to that amendment, can we approve the agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Have motion second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, the amendment as amended is approved. Alamance County Sheriff's Department. If you guys would come forward. And the two gentlemen in the back row and see the <laughs> 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 the reason we're recognizing these folks, um, Tammy Sue Aldridge was murdered and brutally murdered, um, how many years ago? 45. 45 years ago. 45, 1979. And these gentlemen... With the Sheriff's Department, uh, state your name for the public, please, sir. Dan Denton. All right. Brett Hall. And these gentlemen just did a wonderful job. We had a press conference last week uh, acknowledging the solving of that uh, brutal murder. Uh, and this is major. Uh, you had her family there at the press conference. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was just absolutely outstanding work. Uh, DNA and these dedicated officers are to be commended. Now,
Okay, I'm going to have a uh, proclamation. I don't see a proclamation, but we are pronouncing this as, state your names again. Dan Denton. Fred Hall. Month in law enforcement. Oh, thank you. Sir. And we I'm just want to say thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> we appreciate it. We have a lot of fine people working over there that works hard. And, uh, you know, that case has been looked at probably 50 times since I took office. And one little thing, <clears throat> this man picked up on it. And, of course, I need to tell you, it took a lot of money to get those labs to do that work. So, you know, I said do it. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. The, uh, the family deserve closure. Absolutely. And we, and we appreciate y'all supporting what we do. Appreciate what you guys do. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Great you. job. If we will, can we have all the commissioners stand here and you guys stand in front of us? Uh, and hopefully the cameras will focus on you and not us. <laughs> you know if I'm in the picture making some shots. <laughs> Squeezing guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have, this is Fair Housing Month. And Jason Scott, are you present? Yes, sir. If you would come forward, please. <laughs> Tell us a little about Fair Housing. Um, so I'm president for Burlington Elements County Association of Realtors for the 24 year. and. Um, we recognize fair housing as a focus year-round, of course, but we call it out in April because that was the year of the passage of the Fair Housing Act. So nationwide, we recognize this month, and um, we look at nine categories of um, protected classes um, that all housing, all housing should be fair to those folks for everyone. And we county commissioners would like to adopt this as Fair Housing Month. That is the month of April in this year, 2024, and I'll read the proclamation subject to your approval. Whereas the Fair Housing Act was enacted April 11, 1968, uh, enshrined into federal law the goal of eliminating racial segregation and ending housing discrimination in the United States. And whereas the Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination in housing based upon race, color, religion, sex, um, family status, national origin, and disability, and commits a recipients of federal housing to the affirm affirmatively Fair Housing Act in their communities. Whereas the County of Alamance County is committed to the mission and intent of Congress to provide fair and equal housing opportunities to all, and whereas our social fabric and economy, health, and environment are strengthened in diverse, inclusive communities, and whereas more than 50 years since the passage of the Fair uh, Housing Act, discrimination persists and many communities remain segregated, and, and I might throw in there, Alamance County, I hope, is an exception. And I think we've done well in this county. That's not part of the proclamation. Whereas the act of housing discrimination and, and barriers uh, to equal housing opportunities are repugnant to a common sense of decency and fairness. And now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Elements County Board of Commissioners, hereby proclaim April 2024 as Fair Housing Month in Alamance County. Uh, and an inclusive community committed to fair housing and promoting appropriate activities by private and public entities to provide and advocate for equal housing opportunities for all residents and prospective residents of Alamance County 
This is the 15th day of April 2024. I know this is not the April 24th, but that's the date of the proclamation. And it's already been signed by myself. And so do we have a motion to that effect, board? So moved. Second. Have a motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's already signed. I'm going to present this to you, sir. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your Appreciate help. it. And you're going to let me know who's presenting the uh, Liver Sweep Week. I believe Katie Snyder is here. All right. Ms. Snyder. I know, be careful, the guy's uh, walking behind you, <laughs> Mr. Danley, good to see you. <laughs> uh, but you and your dad, whole family, just some of my favorite people. Thank you. Okay, tell us a little about uh, Litter Sweep Week. Okay, well, my name is Katie Snyder. I'm the director of New Leaf Society, and we are a nonprofit here in Alamance County that works to improve curb appeal across the county. Uh, so in April, we'd like to celebrate the North Carolina Department of Transportation's Litter Sweep, and we're encouraging uh, everyone across the county to participate. Um, you can contact NCDOT for information on how to volunteer, and I will be out picking up litter the next week myself. So, <laughs> so we, we've asked uh, the commissioner to proclaim it Litter Sweep uh, in, in the county of And Mr. Danda, we all know who you are, but this, uh, you so guys I'm on the uh, New Leaf Board. And give your name. Yeah, Mark Daniels. <laughs> okay. We also got uh, Trip Durham and uh, uh, Dick Shirley back there. Yeah. Uh, They've been shy. And gentlemen, <laughs> we're going to ask the two of you guys to come forward, please. <laughs> <laughs> and these gentlemen I've known many, many, many years. Dick Shirley, I'm not going to tell how many years what you've known. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Litter Sweep Week is April uh, 13 through 27 of this year, 2024, whereas the North Carolina Department of Transportation sponsors a biennial statewide roadside litter removal initiative, initiative called the Litter Sweep, and whereas volunteers and maintenance crews devote time during the sweep to safely remove litter with support provided by the North Carolina Department of Transportation via local program coordinators, and whereas the municipalities and citizens of Alamance County and this board are invited to participate in Litter Sweep by New Leaf Society, a nonprofit organization that partners with local governments and the North Carolina uh, DOT to improve the uh, county's in this case, country as well, curb appeal, and whereas local government plays a critical role in keeping communities clean through public works and through leadership by example, and whereas clean communities are more beautiful, desirable, and environmentally healthy places to live, and whereas spring is traditionally the time to celebrate nature and renewal. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Alamance County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim April 13 through 27, 2024, as Litter Sweep Week in Alamance County. Furthermore, we urge all residents to support efforts to protect and enhance the appearance of Alamance County by reducing litter, and I'm going to add to that, and picking up trash when you see it. This is the 15th day of April, 2024. I've already signed it. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to say something to you after we vote. <laughs> Sorry, John, I just didn't know. <laughs> we have celebrities in our, our midst. <laughs> uh, all of these uh, ladies and gentlemen have done so much for Alamance County uh, for many, many, many years. Not just this opportunity, 
but the uh, your society all throughout Alamance County planted trees, all kinds of things, uh, and have done so much positive work. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, Mr. Shirley, yes, when I used to work for Family Abuse Services, I did the child abuse puppet program all over the county. And your dealership would give me a van every year to haul those giant tubs in that stage around. And I couldn't have done it without you, and I really appreciate it. It saved so many lives. And I brought it back with no dents. <laughs> they, they would fly across the back. It was fine. <laughs> Thank you. And he had the nerve to sell me uh, motor vehicles. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Let's go stand up behind them, guys. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We next have public comments. Bobby Chen. And Bobby, you had two topics and you had two speakers. Uh, do you want to give both topics or do you want to? We've got it where we'll stay within the three minute per person. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the commissioners to give, for giving Alcovets an opportunity to bring you up to date on events that are going that we are pursuing this year, uh, the Balloon Festival and Chestnut Ridge. One of the things we've done this year has, in our organization, we restructured, and we have now elected a president from our general membership, and that individual is Brandon Bryant, right here. So he will lead the organization uh, to move us forward. <laughs> All right. Next. Okay, back it up. All right. This year, the Balloon Festival is September 13th, 14th, and 15th. And I um, want to thank Jamie Markle, Markle for her and her staff helping us through the past two years making the Balloon Festival a success. But this year, we're going to have 30 balloons. We'll have both tethered and untethered balloon rides, weather permitting, live entertainment, the kid zone, vendors, food trucks, and we're looking to expand entertainment during the times that the balloons are not flying. Because right now, balloons fly at 8 o'clock in the morning and at 4.30 in the afternoon. So you got all that other time that we need to fill with entertainment. So we're exploring other uh activities for that. <clears throat> At this time, I would like Tally to speak about things that we have done for the park. So uh, this last year, we our project was to update power at the uh, gazebo. So we added a 200 amp service. Uh, we also installed a 50 amp service at the maintenance building. So when they bring out emergency uh, management, when they come out and set their trailer up, they don't have to run generators. So they can use that for any event they have out there. And we also installed receptacles at the restrooms and office midway down near the playground. <clears throat> um, they have a lot of activities there and they have to pull a lot of drop cores. They always blow circuits, so we fixed that this year also. So this is us leaving the event. We stayed there a week, because this is the second year, second year in a row at as of last year that we got rained a lot of rain so like we've always said that we would leave the park in better shape than what we do when we show up so once again we stayed out there for about a week re sowed everything seeded everything and also there's a few other improvements that we also so this we took a picture of this because when we were out there the uh the park their staff superintendent 
I had said that they had the um, Frisbee Golf Tournament, the national coming up, and they said that they had a problem with erosion down at the creek. So we had the perfect equipment there, so we spent a day down rebuilding that, putting ripap out, and also fixed that so that event would go off a lot better. So we did that also. I think I've driven up that road when it looked like that. <laughs> when all the water was there. It was, it was a mess. So the reason we took the picture of this, this is the Garrett House, and that service on the end of it to the left of the deck, you can barely see it, has a wood box built over it. It's a 100-amp interior panel on the exterior. So our goal this year is to update that to a 200-amp panel. So if they're having an event, they'll have plenty of power there for tents and, you know, food trucks or whatever. So that's our goal this year. So we wanted to talk. This is Richard. So Richard, this is Richard Shevlin. Hey, how's everybody? I'm Richard Shevlin. I'm the vice chairman of Elka Vets. Uh, Chestnut Ridge, as most of you know, are real close to our heart uh, for Pete Chestnut. We've made a lot of progress since last year. As you can see in the slides, we've added uh, a flagpole. And we've also had a young gentleman, Isaac. Isaac, would you please stand? He's an Eagle Scout, uh, Isaac Horner. Uh, he's an Eagle Scout. He wanted to do a special project so that we had the material donated. And with him and his father, they, bu they built this beautiful 12 by 20 uh, picnic area. Uh, and you can also see in the pictures, we actually put each of the military in order as they are designated by the United States government. So I'd like to thank Isaac. Uh, yes, great job. So we understand you, you did this in, in, in uh, memory of your grandfather. Who was your grandfather? Okay. Well, we again thank you. Uh, he did a wonderful job. Uh, again, he you know with the help of getting all the material donated. And, uh, this this facility. If you haven't been up there in a while, come up and see the new facility. It's beautiful. In the center picture, you can see we we have the well house. The well house is uh, also a new addendum that we have. Uh, it'll house the power uh, for the beginning of the project. So we have the path in the area cleared for the chapel. We just haven't been able to start that yet. We're still raising funds. We're also getting the roads together as well. Uh, I'm going to let Chuck talk about that. That's his expertise. But again, Chestnut Ridge is, uh, is, is, is on track. We'd like to think it would go further, uh, but we're just, you know, we're str struggling getting some things done. But with the help of the community, we've really gone far. And we really like to thank everybody for being a part of it. I mean, everyone here in this community has touched us one way or the other. So, uh, thank you. I'd like to state also that all the improvements you did at Cedar Rock Park were at no cost to the county. That is correct. You paid for everything. Yes, sir. Everything. We appreciate it. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Next slide. Okay. So, uh, the picture... Uh, Pleasure. Will you say something? Will you back up real quick? Yeah, I'm <laughs> Will you say something about the, the boot prints on the well house? Um, slide that. There you go. <laughs> so on the right-hand side behind the flag, you'll see there's two boots. Uh, mm -hmm. Chuck called me in the middle of the night in South Dakota, and we talked about these boots for like two hours, trying to figure out how we were going to make the boots, what they were going to look like. And he sent me a picture, and as soon as I saw that, I got goosebumps on my arm. The military, when you're standing in formation and you get ready to march, you always step off on your left foot. So you're always moving forward. And it just so happened that that picture meant to me, uh, you know, we need to be ever forward moving. And Chestnut Ridge is built for uh, a diversionary treat, retreat for our service members so that they can get past their troubles and their uh, tribulations and, and continue to move forward in life. So uh, when you see those boots, uh, if you don't get a chill, it, there must be something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Thanks, Fletcher. Thank you. So we had met with the uh, county and so with emergency management and also with the fire marshal. And we are installing on the existing road, fire tower road, we're installing three pull offs. This one here is the first one. I would like to have gravel on it, but uh, we're working a deal out with one of the trucking companies that wants to truck it on the weekend free for us. So we're trying to hit a weekend where he can run his trucks. 
So it's approximately 100 foot long, and uh, we went from zeros to heroes with all the people up there because they are really excited about it. They finally have places they can pass. So there'll be three areas like this going up onto the mountain. So uh, as you can see, we've graded it, and also our riprap is all the rock that we dug up because uh, it was a lot of rock up there, of course. So again, we'd like to thank everyone for your support. And one thing that we'd like to bring to the board's attention is the yearly fee uh, for renting the park for Elka Vets is $4,000. And every year that we pay that $4,000, we pay that for our veterans of Alamance County. But we would like to ask uh, if one, if the fees can't be waived, we understand we'll continue paying, but we would like to have the ability to say where the fees are spent. And we would like to, if we have that right, to say if we can say where the $4,000 goes to, we would like to see some type of an amphitheater named after the veterans of Alamance County, somewhere in the park, that the money would actually benefit the county as we pay it forward. So it's just something we would like the board to consider. Again, it's $4,000. We know, now you guys know every time we spend $4,000, well, that's $4,000 we don't get to help a vet. But in the long run, it is helping the veterans. That's why we do what we do. And so that's why we bring to the board this, this situation and we lay it on your hands to see it through and see what we could do about it. We really appreciate anything you guys can help us with. Okay. Again, thanks everybody in the community too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know we don't normally comment after uh, public speakers, but I want to say thank you to the Eagle Scout. Uh, congratulations, that's a major honor. I am an Eagle Scout. You will always be an Eagle Scout. Uh, and secondly, I drove up that uh, road to where the center of your building before any construction, and I was in a uh, three-quarter ton good sized truck and it was not easy thank you for what you're doing and then all the work you guys did at cedar rock park again at no cost i would uh ask and board either agree or tell me no that uh mr baker you look into possibly waiving that four thousand dollar fee in light of all the work that they're doing and monies that they're donating to alamance county every year with uh, the electrical panels and everything else. Could you research that for us? Sure, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Okay. You, I was braver than you were. I did it in a half ton. Okay. I did it in a Honda. I had to get Car. my wheels realigned. Yeah. I walked. Like, so why right do you just need a new, whole new, a whole new undercarriage? Yeah. Some kind of, not even a road. In the snow. Five feet drift, spare foot. Uphill both ways, right? <laughs> Susan Brothers is next, and I think she just walked out. Mm -hmm. What are you guys at the elevator? S. What are you trying to get, Johnny? No, Susan Brothers. She's going to come back. She's coming back. Okay. All right. Then that's it for the speakers. And I apologize for the more than three minutes, but they had signed up four people to speak, and so we just kind of consolidated into uh, more than three minutes, and I apologize for that. Okay. We now have uh, item number seven, which is the consent agenda, and the only thing left on the consent agenda is item or items on 7C, it's the regular minutes for the March 18 meeting and the uh, regular meeting for April 1. Do we have a motion to approve motion those to approve. two? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> Excellent. Unanimous. Okay. We are now going into a public hearing. We just did. No, don't we have to talk about the new one to pull this off? Oh, yeah, but I ended up down here. Yeah. Oh, God, just check. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go.
the public hearing, um, and Matthew, you want yes, to come or you're already here? Thank you. Um, tell us what item 8A is, the UDA amendment. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Commissioners. Um, my uh, presentation tonight will probably pale in comparison to what we've seen, but I'll try to make it uh, entertaining, nevertheless. So uh, the Planning Department recently received an application from Mr. Anthony Moyes and his son, Josh Moyes, and they submitted an application to amend the Unified Development Ordinance in order to narrow the RV Park Clearway uh, width from 60 feet to 30 feet. They are the owners of Simple Times RV Park and Snow Camp. However, if this uh, motion is adopted, this regulation would in fact apply to all future RV park developments in the county, theirs included. Uh, the draft of this proposed amendment is shown uh, in your packet in uh, UDO section 6.14.1B1. The planning board did review and uh, approve this amendment during their March meeting and uh, they approved that change by a vote of seven to one with one uh, member recusal. Uh, in approving the recommended changes, the planning board adopted the following consistency statement in accordance with North Carolina General Statute 160D-604D. Quote, we find that this amendment is consistent with the Alamance County Land Development Plan Economic Policy Recommendation Number 4 which aims to promote Alamance County's scenic natural areas and recreational assets. And this amendment would also maintain the character of recreational vehicle parks while maintaining safety and emergency vehicle access." End quote. The notice for today's public hearing also ran twice in the Alamance County News in accordance with state law. And prior to the uh, planning board uh, review of this item, I did visit the property with Deputy Fire Marshal Jesse Gwynn in order to evaluate the safety of the proposal. Uh, Fire Marshal John Payne is in attendance tonight, and I'm sure he can answer any questions about uh, emergency access and safety. I do have a couple of pictures uh, to share with you, as well as an RV park road profile, and certainly happy to answer any questions you may have after that. So. This is uh, simply a screenshot of the GIS um, view of Simple Times RV Park, and you'll see there's a couple of numbers uh, listed on there, one and two. These are simply the points on the property in which we took the following pictures that I'll show you now. So this is um, simply the uh, fire marshal uh, emergency truck on the uh, gravel travelway inside the park. Just ahead of the truck here, we did run a tape measure across you might not be able to see it on the TV. Uh, they're kind of centered in the shot. And then the close-up here shows a measurement really from tree to tree, kind of the small tree on the left to the larger tree on the right. We got a measure measurement of about 27 feet. At spot number two in the park, and this is really close to the entrance, uh, the similar uh, measurement there, the, R, the uh, measuring tape is stretched out across the entryway, and it maxed out at about 35 feet. And as you can see, it goes from tree to uh, just about the, the spot of the road sign there. This is um, just a rendering of kind of the current regulation on the left-hand side and the proposed regulation on the right. So this is kind of an overhead profile of the RV Park Road. You can think of the clearway uh, as defined by the ordinance as kind of the right-of-way for interior RV Park Roads. The travelway is the actual gravel surface by which you would uh, travel through the park. So. Simplest terms, clear, clearway is kind of tree to tree, and travelway is kind of edge of gravel to edge of gravel. The travelway is not at question at all in this proposed amendment. It would remain at 24 feet, but the uh, proposed amendment would, as I mentioned earlier, reduce the clearway from its current width of 60 feet down to uh, 30 feet. That's pretty much all I've got, and again, I'm more than happy to answer any questions before you go into public hearing. More of this uh, planning board director, do you have questions before we open the public hearing? Yes, so, sir. That's up to you. I remember <clears throat> one of the one of the um, issues that we talked about when we passed this ordinance about a year ago was making sure that emergency vehicles could both ingress and egress at the same time. Uh, does this change allow that? Uh, so this change would not affect that. So this would simply be, again, the clearway, which, as I mentioned, is more or less measured from tree to tree. The travel way, which is currently set at 24 feet, would not change. And in, in the conversations I've had with the fire marshals, they don't feel that this would compromise 
uh, emergency vehicle access or, or safety in any way. Does staff have a recommendation? Uh, we can certainly make a recommendation if you'd like. Yeah, I haven't necessarily prepared a recommendation. Uh, based on my conversations with the fire marshals, again, there's no jeopardizing of safety. And so, you know, when you think about an RV park and what it is as a development, uh, you enjoy the, the privacy and protection of trees. You want to get out into a natural area. So with a 60-foot clearway, um, you might say that there's a little bit of an unnecessary standard to, to remove some of the natural vegetation. The 30 foot would obviously keep vegetation and not uh, risk safety at all. So I would I would recommend adoption and approval if you're if you're interested in my recommendation. All right, I am. Thank you, uh, Mr. Stevens. Any issue with the change? Not for me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Does anything about that allow you to have more RVs in the park? <sighs> Well, it may. So the conversation that I had with the Moises was that in the proposed phase three of their development, because of the 60-foot clearway regulation, they would have to eat into um, proposed RV spaces. Some other properties, depending on the arrangement, you may not have to compromise RV spaces. So I think it's probably a little bit uh, dependent upon the specific property. What they expressed to me was that it would compromise RV spaces. Mr. Lashley, any questions? No questions. Mr. Thank Carver. you for your presentation. Yes, sir. Thank you. And I, I uh, hold on one if second. you. One second. I'm just one. I get the planning board meeting because I came. Oh, good gracious. Two acre, one acre, one and a half acre, you men. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I mean, we're talking about the, I heard the word clusters, not the way I use the word sometimes, but cluster homes and getting as many houses in a track of land and and that kind of thing, and community, all this, boy, you people are smart. I just, just think about this. It, I just didn't want to see that cramp their style as far as to take out their numbers of sites for RVs <clears throat> because when I was at the hospital the other week um, and I heard from somebody that's got a really bad hoarding situation in Mebane, I've been contacted, that a lot of travel nurses stay mm. in these kind of places. And I know they're ran really well, they're very safe. And I was just curious if that was going to take away some of your ability to have, I didn't want you to go like from 10 to 7. That's what I'm trying to say. Make, take out your spots. Okay. Just asking questions that I probably really don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to be on your side, buddy. That's it. We appreciate it. We don't have to have a little 101, Mr. Planning Director. Give me a call anytime. <laughs> yeah. So um, regarding cluster subdivisions and some of the other features that you're talking about, so that's related to hypothetical subdivision ordinance changes. Mm -hmm. The RV park regulations are obviously um, in a different section in the ordinance. And other features of current RV park development would not change. So the width of a space, um, additional parking requirements, buffers, things of that nature, this would really just be the narrowing of that, of that clearway on the shoulders of the gravel road. Okay. Just to clarify, the only thing that changes subject to my reading, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, under item 6.14.1b, uh, it simply strikes 60 and replaces it with number 3 -0. Yes, sir. That's exactly correct. that's correct. the only change. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions of this board? Do we have a motion to go into, close here, uh, into um, the public hearing? So moved. Second. Any discussion on the motion? If not, everyone in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? We're in closed session. Okay. Public hearing. Public hearing. Excuse me. <laughs> public hearing. I said that just a minute ago. <laughs> in, in a public hearing. Uh, don't laugh that hard. <laughs> <laughs> I just said we'll get there eventually. Yeah. We can amend it yeah. so we can do that. <laughs> Rick, we okay. need to get you a gavel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, even more of mine. Uh, anyone on this side of the room have any questions, comments? Anyone on this side? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Well, you're on that side, Henry. Yeah. Yeah. Come on up. Then come on up. Let's wave. Let's wave this right. Good 
Good afternoon, Commissioner. My name is Henry Vines, and I live at 3450 Isley Drive, Snow Camp. Uh, I also serve on the planning board as well. Uh, this park is right close to my house, so I know I know about it, and uh, I know it's run very well. I think that when we first initially looked at uh, sitting RV park at 60 foot, that we wanted to be sure that the safety of the park was there. And it's a little bit uh, over excessive because there's a lot of right of ways that are only 30 foot right of ways that supply homes, uh, 15 to 20 homes on just a 30 foot right of way. So I see no problem with allowing this to happen. Uh, like I said, the 24 foot you know, road that allowed two vehicles to pass. So I would uh, recommend and ask you to approve this change in, in the in ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. And we thank you. Any other comments on my left? You're right. On this side. Motion to close public hearing. Second. Second. What was your motion to close? Close public hearing. All right. No other comments. Excellent. All right. All in favor of closing the uh, public hearing indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now in the closed session. No <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to quit saying that. <laughs> we are now out of the uh, public comment period. Uh, do we have a motion to make this amendment? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? I, I will be glad to say that when we when we approved the the uh, ordinance originally, based on the uh, directions from the planning department and the planning board, I thought I felt like it might be excessive, but I was taking their advice at the time, and I think we've uh, come to a point where, yeah, it is excessive. So. I would also say that uh, my wife and I, my parents had travel trailers or fifth wheelers or both uh, most of our lives, uh, having camped many, many places, including Myrtle Beach and you name it, uh, 30 feet I think is plenty of width, and I appreciate it. Uh, okay, all in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, it's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, we're now going into what has been designated as 9A, uh, which will originally is designated as 7A1. Um, 7A1, budget item number 23. And who's doing that, Susan? I'll be glad to Thank you. Just for clarification, um, we wanted to bring to the board's attention, uh, we had to make a change, a correction at the time of this was submitted and it did not carry forward to the front page. What we are asking to do in regards to the ACC Capital Project Fund and Capital Reserve Fund is that we would request to amend the Alamance Community College Project Fund um, by reducing it by $76,661.61. Um, that was due to a clerical error and some estimates that we had been given at the beginning of that project. Um, what this would do ultimately is to reduce about $30,000 from the proceeds of the bond sale, reduce $18,918.60 from the bond premium, and would return to the ACC Capital Reserve $27,743.01. Uh, we, If you'll recall, we had transferred funds over that transfer, we did not need that full amount. So this will then reduce that budget and transfer 27,000 back to their capital reserve balance, which would bring that balance to $199,576.27. What project is that? That would be for that first um, issuance, so the main PAL G renovation. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the second issuance. 
board, do we have any questions? There was another part of the budget um, amendment that was about the parks department. Did you have a question about that one, Commissioner I, Turner? I did. It's. I think it's just kind of neat, and I think it would be good if the public knew a little bit about it. I think. Sure, we'd be happy to talk well, about let's, it. Let's vote on these one at a time. Okay. Um, as to this budget and management uh, services amendment, do we have a, uh, a motion? A uh, motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, they actually are on the same item, the same budget amendment. So we'll need a second vote for the second one now as well. Brian, did you want to speak to that or Jamie? Yeah, I'll speak to that. And Jamie Murkar, our parks director, is here too. If we have any follow up questions, but this, uh, this budget amendment uh, probably doesn't tell the whole story of what we're doing, but it's a really great project to build an observation tower on the top of Cane Creek Mountain in the Cane Creek Mountains natural area. So this grant amendment is actually for a, this budget amendment is for an $87,000 donation that we're getting to go towards the tower that's not the total amount but this is a, a private donation that's being made through the conservation fund that's going to match some other funds we already had but this was the last bit that we needed to have the funds to complete the tower so um, this is a part of the county that's really unique that most people have never been to and, and don't really know exists but it, it's the tallest point east of Greensboro in the state of North Carolina um, when you get up there uh, but for the tree cover, you can see forever. So you can see Greensboro just about every day. A really clear day, you can see Pilot Mountain. Um, it's amazing. The problem is, on top of that mountain, there's still a bunch of chestnut oaks that block your view. Um, we wanted people to have a chance to see that view all the time. And so this 80-foot tower is going to get us over the 70-foot tall chestnut oaks that are on top of that mountain, uh, get you just over the tree line so folks can enjoy that view all the time. It is different from the existing uh, tower that's out there now that some, some of you folks who went to high school here probably are familiar with. It's a different tower entirely. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking at you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> completely separate tower in a separate location. That one's still there. It's owned by the state. It was built for, for fire suppression purposes. But this is going to be a great amenity for our county, and I, I think it will encourage a lot of people to, uh, to make the relatively short hike to the top of the mountain. There's still probably no way you're going to get me a zip line from your new tree. <laughs> <laughs> there is, there is Our insurance no is way. not going to allow that. No you get a bunch of beavers, and you won't have no problem with them other trees. <laughs> Jamie, do you have anything to add to my yeah. explanation? Mr. Stevens, has the statute of limitations expired on Mr. L well, okay. <laughs> Any further discussion on this item? All in favor? Uh, no. I, I'll make the motion to approve it. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, the other my, uh, item, uh, which was 7B, is now 9B. Um, and um, our health director is present. Tony, pronounce your last name. <laughs> Lojutaje. Exactly. <laughs> Common spelling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so before you, commissioners, this is the health department seeking permission to submit a Bureau of Justice Assistance Grant. Um, this is Bureau of Justice Assistance Grant will help support the adult treatment court. That's how that was uh, presented before you back on March 18th. Um, so really it's gonna add value and enhance the services to the adult treatment court early on as we get this up and moving. Uh, the grant itself is for four years. It's a total of $900,000 of grant funds, $300,000 in all, what I'll call um, of in-kind equivalent um, uh, grant funds, meaning that we can use employees that are budgeted, as long as they're not budgeted with federal salary or other federal grants, um, to be that in-kind donation as well as office space. Um, so the, the coordinator of the adult, tr the, um, the adult court would be, able to, would be able to use that salary and help support that in-kind in donations. And that's a total of $300,000 over the four years. 
And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I just had a couple. The, on March 18th, we approved uh, the recommendation about the opioid, opioid settlement funds. Um, and some of that included positions. Does this affect what we've already approved such that we need to relook at that? Or is this an addition to what we've already got? So this is an addition. This is an enhancement to what was approved on March 18th. March 18th. So on March 18th, you approved the adult trial court coordinator, um, the person that really works with the the, the judges, um, all the po all the folks that will touch adult treatment court, as well as coordinating the services for the 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 clients that come into that the system. What this grant does is basically enhances it by adding case managers um, that will do the work with the coordinating for the clients that come in to get them treatment, mental health evaluation, housing support, any type of social support, and really do the boots on the ground work um, for those clients that are coming in. If we didn't have this, that would shift on to the coordinator. So it's most likely they wouldn't be able to carry a higher caseload. So really we're enhancing efficiency so that work can get carried out. Do you envision these people would be housed at the health department or at uh, the courts yeah. or somewhere else? Or so, the yeah, so what we're looking at with this, so this will, be, this will be a contract position for the grant, right? These positions I'm talking about, which is the case manager, a drug, drug and alcohol counselor, um, as well as a data person. And so with that, we're also looking at hiring a behavioral health service to help support that. So if you need assessments or medication assisted treatment, whatever that might be. So a contracted package. So when I, to answer your question, Jack, where they're housed, it's most likely they're going to be housed at whoever we contract with in their facility to be able to be in-house and deliver those services for the individual. So it's direct in your face case management with those those clients. And the last thing, Tony, is if we if we get this in the last four years, what happens at the end of four years to the folks that we've hired with the nine hundred thousand? Yeah, so one of those positions that in in the grant application is for a data evaluator, as well as we'll have a data evaluator with the as part of the, the opioid settlement. So we're really going to be looking at these data, looking for efficiencies, uh, recidivism rates, um, what's the social impact. So ideally at the end of four years, or even before that as the, as the data comes in, we'll stand before the commissioners and give you an update on what this lo looks like. What are the what are the costs that are be sa being saved here? What's the social impact? So in four years, you all can make a decision on where does this program go moving forward. So either we need a more grant funding or county funding at that point to continue to fund the project. Correct, yes, sir. And we'd make a decision then. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions of this board? I just noticed today on the news, you were the first person I thought of, that there was a little girl that was injured in the Iran strike. She was in the Bed Bedouin, Bedouin camps. Camp. I'm just so glad you're home. Yeah, thank you. What are the chances of receiving this grant? So they're going to award nine awards out of this bank, but I am optimistic that we'll be blessed. I think we have a very strong application. Um, we have been fortunate to work with Impact Alamance, an, an independent grant writer, to help us put this package together. And I've been told it's close to 60 pages, so it's very robust. And I think we have a good case. We're in a perfect spot in time to really make a case and uh, be very competitive for this grant. And good luck to Alamance County. Thank yes. you. Yes. We Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. A motion and second. Any further discussion? Just to say that we also, Mr. Chairman, could, uh, at the end of four years, use additional op opioid settlement funds yeah. to, to help out as well. So I, I just, the only concern I have is the danger of, of funding significant positions with money that's not reoccurring. But I think we'll just have to make that call at the time. Yeah, and it is four years. Yeah. So that's then, very positive. And like sadly, I'm sorry, it goes up. Like everything else, nine hundred thousand dollars would be a drop in the bucket in four years. And sadly, I don't think the drug problem's going anywhere. So we see how it increases all the time. And the Piedmont Tried Regional Council, every time I'm at that meeting, are always getting grants about stuff like this. So we can't. We just really need to tie into them more to really have another layer of funding for this. Um, I was telling Sky a while ago about the Governor's Crime Commission. When I started on the commission four years ago, it was $109 million to go across North Carolina. This year it's going to be 25. Next year around 16. There's a 75% cut, although 
crime and violence and everything else is certainly not cut, but that's what we're looking at. So we need to squeeze every dime we can get out because this is the foundation for so much wrong in our society. Everything, you look at it, it kind of leads to this pathway of drugs. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Ms. Sullivan. Good evening, commissioners. Um, I'm here requesting approval to apply for a uh, U.S. Department of Justice grant um, from the Office on Violence Against Women under the category Improving Criminal Justice Response. It's a 36-month grant in the amount of $500,000. Grant funds would be used to provide additional staff and support for the district attorney's office as well as support for victims being seen through law enforcement um, and follow-up services to enhance safety. And it does not require a match, is that correct? It does not. <coughs> Motion to approve. I'll second. Any further discussion? Just wondering if the district attorney is weighed in on the request. Yes, so we're we're writing the grant together. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All in favor <coughs> signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous. All right, that uh, concludes item number nine, which is all the other business. Uh, county manager. Thanks, commissioners. Um, I wanted to remind you that we have a CIP work session <coughs> scheduled for next Monday at 10 a.m. It'll be held in this room. It's to do a little deeper dive into the proposed capital improvement plan, go through some of the projects and answer any questions that you all have so that you'll be comfortable voting on that and adopting that during the budget process later on in June. And within your packet, we have your third quarter financial reports. Happy to answer any questions about um, those, if there's anything in particular you'd like to talk about. And again, the time on Monday the 22nd? On the 22nd, we're in here at 10 a.m. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Heidi, is there anything I should be focused on in this meeting, something that I should... What, what should I focus on? What, what should I bring to this meeting so I don't waste anybody else's time? Well, we're happy to answer any questions. The um, PAYGO amounts that we typically talk about, those are increasing for uh, both ABSS and the county projects. We'll be prepared to talk about uh, county projects a little more in depth. We kind of skimmed the top of some of those during your board retreat, so happy to talk about the other funding sources that would be feeding into this. Um, and then, you know, we can talk about projections, uh, any other projects that are not on there. We have some large ticket items hanging um, in limbo, so we're, we're readily able to talk about anything. I do have like one these. request, and I saw him walk in earlier. Is it possible during this meeting on Monday to um, get Jeremy Akins to come talk to us about some documents that he sent us this week? Or what? Jeremy Akins, tax administrator. Uh, I'd like for him to be at this meeting, if it's all possible. I, I don't need much of his time. He sent out some documents this past week, and I think the commissioners had time to take a look at them. And I think, I hope that they will be prepared on Monday to talk to Jamie about these. To Jeremy. Jeremy, okay. excuse me. I see Jamie. I look at her. That's like, okay. I'm sorry, okay. Jamie. I can, <laughs> I can, <laughs> I can make you that back there someplace? Thank you very much. Sure. I do appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Anything else? Nothing else, thank you. All right, County Commissioners, Ms. Thompson, I'll put you first. Oh, um, just, I, I just wanted to, I'm glad that Tony, with, I was just talking about the PTRC, our workforce group, um, we pay them right much money a year, and I just really want us to get everything out of them that we can. Um, I don't want us to miss stuff. And also about um, hoarding, um, I got a couple of calls. Um, it was really funny. Tony said when he was in Israel, he'd come upon this place, this village, and, and terrible trash. And I was the first person he thought of. He was going to send me a picture <laughs> from across the world. Thank you. Thank you. But um, we got a lot of these places that are being looked into. Sometimes they end up in court. And, I mean, I get calls. I'm sure that commissioners do, too. But we got to do something about this because um, it just... 
We don't know half of them probably because you can be out riding and all of a sudden you go, holy cow. And, um, you know, if we have a land field and we've got other things and we just, it's all about being responsible, but sometimes that gets to a point where it's just over somebody's head and they just can't do it themselves. They need serious help, like any kind of addiction. But um, I, I think our county, we need to really get more into enforcing this as much as we can because if you live beside this, you don't want to live beside this. I mean, we all went through a property in Burlington that took, what, two and a half years to finally get straightened out and it's still kind of in that area still with another neighbor. So um, I just want us to really think about something like that that we can do um, to make sure that folks don't get in over their head as fast as they can because I know there's groups that can help people with stuff like that. But it's dangerous, it's not healthy, it's, um, it's rats, it's rodents, it's all kind of thing, it smells, and it's right there beside your house, which I'm sure it doesn't help your house to retain its value. So, and it can really cause problems between neighbors. So, um, it's just something I want us to really think about. I know I've, I've been so fortunate to be part of this so many times since I've been on the commissioner board, but I, I just think that we can look at this a different way and, and be more, more serious about it because it is a serious issue. It's a health issue. And I just appreciate everything the health department does for that because if you call, you've had it and you want it fixed and it takes a long time to get that going. I mean, I can quote places I've reported about that people reported to me and uh, we just can't, picking up a couple of bags, that's not fixing an entire property that's been just like a little landfill. So that, that's it. Mr. Lashley. Um, I just have one question. I meant to ask Susan about this earlier. Um, I saw your third, your, your quarter financial. Mm -hmm. I just really going to say this again. <laughs> I said it last <laughs> month ago. I want you to take a look at those sales tax numbers. Yes. I want the commissioners <laughs> to take a look at those sales tax numbers because they're not where we thought they would be. Yep. Now, just that being said, I do believe that we are on schedule to meet the things that we projected last budget season. Only thing I'm saying is I'm just saying take a look, be very, very cognizant of the next report that Ms. Evans sends out because that's the last one that you're going to have an opportunity to see. We might get a chance to see the June numbers because this is an Alamance County taxpayers have been very, very fortunate to have two big anchors on each side of the county that's helped them decrease their tax bill, property taxes. Um, so that being said, it's an important that Allen Heads County taxpayers take a look at that because it has been a benefit to the taxpayers the past three years because we have gotten over the projections that we had even made. And even, I think, last year before we went down because we didn't want, and we still got it. That's not, it's not happening anymore. So all I'm saying is keep an eye on it because that is the one big driver that could cause a major hole in the next budget uh, situation, and we don't need to be filling any any more holes. We have enough holes to fill. This one could make it big time bad on the taxpayers of Alamance County. Thank you. Uh, we've been talking about behavioral health, mental health, substance abuse a lot from up here in the last few months. That's going to become a, a significant topic in the next few months, too, as we open up the Yellowman's County Diver um, I'm sorry, Behavioral Health Center. And we've also been talking about recovery courts and with a goal to open those up uh, in January. But, but I wonder if we ought to have, I think we're probably going to have some, some presentations on the Behavioral Health Center, but I wonder if we also might have a little bit more comprehensive presentation on what recovery courts look like. I don't think it's clear... What, what that whole process looked like and how it connects with behavioral health. Um, and so I, I wonder if, if uh, just a suggestion that we might have in the next few meetings, something more comprehensive on explaining what that's going to look like. And we'd be happy to get that set up. Mr. Carter. Well, we had a presentation. Pam and I went up to, was it? I never can remember, Surrey County. Sorry. But they, they're not recovery court. They're with a programming. That's true. Orange and Hornet are the recovery court. And not to interrupt you, but I think the commissioners, because I went with the team, need to go to Orange County and shadow their recovery court because people can come in here and tell you all day long, but when you go and see the effect of it, what you're actually working with, it's, it's like reading a cost report 
of a school and then you walk in the hall and see everything coming out of the ceiling, it's a total different thing or any building. So I would encourage, um, Amy Griffin was there for us. Um, that's that's a, a fascinating situation. They, they're years ahead of us. That's okay. But we can look at them to not be so many years behind them. So sorry, Steve, I just wanted to say, we y'all need to take a field trip. It's amazing. Well, Bill and I have both mentioned this uh, recently and I think John may have also done a walkthrough. I don't know if anybody else has yet in the uh, OR yeah. uh, or ER at the uh, uh, ARMC. Uh, they're dealing with an issue in, a mul in multiple hospitals, not just Alamance County, with borders. And the definition of a border is somebody they can't remove from the hospital for various reasons. And uh, um, as we move into this, looking at the recovery court and the other things that we're talking about, I think we need to be prepared to take a look at what's going on there as well. Uh, the Behavioral Health Center needs to help that situation as well, but that's going to quickly fill that space if we can't find another location for those folks to go. Also, um, Bill kind of stole my thunder on sales tax. <laughs> I was going to talk about that. I, t I had a conversation about that today. Um, that is right on the rim of where we need it to be, and uh, it's a little scary when you're looking. We don't have a clue where it's going to go in 24, 25. Mm -hmm. So you might want to just provide a quick explanation about the Medicare issue and our Medicaid issue on that and what's driving it down for us right now where it was up so well during the COVID cycle? Susan's looking up something, but I did want to say that last year during the budget deliberations, the board asked Susan in particular about increasing her projection for sales right. tax, and she recommended that we not do that. And so I'm very pleased that we kept that number conservative because we have seen that number continue to decline, and that is not a good way to... Yes, Susan's Balance done a great job on budget. this. I can she tell really you've been has. around the pool a few times. <laughs> She's just done a great a job. <laughs> just a few. Bear with me just a few minutes, Commissioners. I need to find an email that always do. Uh, the one that I might have a Canada. Yeah. Yep. I have that. Is that really? I was waiting for her to. Yeah. The, the Medicaid impact on our sales tax. So we talk about it. Let's see. Where did Jeremy go? Okay. I thought I saw him it. come in. Yes. Um, Jeremy. So basically, during COVID, counties, um, and let me go back. I'm going to give you all the groundwork, probably more information than you really want. Um, but several years ago, the county's portion of sales tax was actually 2.5%. Um, but the, the state came in and said, because of Medicaid administrative cost, they did a swap with counties and basically said, we will take that 0.5% and use that for your administrative cost of the Medicaid cost program. Um, and then what would happen is if sales tax was in excess of those administrative costs, then counties were, would receive the difference in years where the administrative costs were greater than the sales tax revenues that were received, the state basically just ate those costs. We were not billed for the difference there. Um, so what has really kind of happened since COVID is that the state and federal government share of the Medicaid uh, program have actually gone up. So there was a higher bonus federal match rate that has now ended. And so with the feds matching those dollars more, that was what enabled the county to receive, if you remember last year, about $2.5 million. Now that those rates have been um, dropped and the state's economic situation has improved, then that burden is now back to that Medicaid swap tax. So that we're, therefore this year, um, instead of seeing the $2.5 million worth of revenue that we did last year, we actually saw about 533000 That's a big difference. It's a big difference. It is a big difference. Um, but if you'll remember when we had our budget retreat, you know, we talked about that in that my assumptions 
during the retreat did not include Medicaid cost for this very same reason. Um, I was not confident that we would see those same levels. However, we did see revenue from this year, so we will take that into consideration in building budgets. But what happens from year to year is that um, we're kind of in a unique situation of where we may have seen a decrease with Medicaid hold harmless monies. We have had additional investment revenues that have kind of helped offset that loss of revenue. Um, right now, our investment revenues um, are exceeding budget by $2.3 million. Excellent. And I was going to ask Mr. Akins, if, and I thought I saw him come in a few minutes ago, but I don't see him now. So um, I've had a conversation today, too, and it seemed like the, our tax base had not grown as much as we had thought it might be. For the county, you know, that's correct. Uh, I don't have it those projections in front of me, but I think it was a growth rate of about 2.5 percent. It's a little bit lower than we normally have yeah, gotten. Right. That, that, yeah, that, that rate that uh, growth rate was probably north of three, probably 3.1 mm -hmm. to yeah. 3.2. Yeah. yeah, we're projecting 2.5 percent for next increase. year's budget. So that that Which to, to me that sounds counterintuitive. I mean, we've seen so much construction going on, but. Evidently, not as much as we had going on in 23-24, or 22-23. Um, it's going to be a tough budget year. You yeah, got that is. right. Yes. Bring your calculator with a full battery in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I had. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't know. These these people are nuts. <laughs> they keep calling it a retreat. We go in a classroom or some area and talk about numbers all day long. <laughs> I think they're misnaming it, uh, but it is extremely informative, and we appreciate what you staff are doing. Uh, so a little tongue-in-cheek there. Uh, I want to thank everyone that's present. We have the chamber present. We have uh, at least one candidate for school board here. Uh, we had law enforcement, and what a job you guys have done. And thank you, 45 years. Incredible. Thank you. Uh, and a number of others, and I'm not going to name everybody, but uh, and staff, everybody, thank you. As to the, uh, and the mayor, <laughs> you did the same thing to Terry Johnson. And one of our <laughs> That's right. Uh, but um, <laughs> <laughs> additionally, being Litter Month, I encourage everyone, we all see trash around. If you see it, please pick it up. Uh, don't be unsafe. Don't pick up unsafe items or let your kids do it. But those little tools that my wife buys all the time, a little uh, extension things you pick up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are cheap and they keep you safe. Uh, and so we want to encourage everybody to do that. Uh, I see we have a county commissioner candidate president as, as well. Uh, just want to thank everybody for being here. And uh, we're getting ready to have uh, recognize Mr. Stevens. And he's going to make us go into a closed session. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right, Mr. John, Chairman. Can I interrupt you for just one second? Sure. Um, I would like to make a comment, too, about um, the detectives that stood up here. We go to church with Brad and the other, other gentleman. Um, my husband represented the young man that was accused of the crime against Tammy Aldridge. It was just horrendous, just, just awful. And, um, and it was acquitted, and I think it was Craig's second murder trial ever. And... And the sad thing about that is when you're acquitted, you just don't know where you do know. But the, the really good thing about this, which is absolutely amazing, is that gentleman doesn't have that hanging over his head for 45 years. There's a lot of unsolved crimes in this county, and I, you know, I'm with you for whatever it takes to get that solved because a family doesn't know somebody was accused and they might have done it, may not. It's just, it's just bad all the way around. Until you find the real person that harms somebody, it's never really settled. And so um, I'm just thankful that it's worked out for all parties. I can't imagine wondering 
for 45 years who took the life of my daughter. So I'm just glad people really put in the work and God bless that and it really come out the way it's supposed to. It takes a lot of diligent work to just never quit. We just can't ever quit anything that means so much like that. So for all the other, I think you what, got six maybe? Whatever it takes, Sheriff Johnson, I got your back because I really think these things need to be sought for that family because um, I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. And I watched you, and I could tell your heart was broken when you did your thing. I'm sorry I was out of town. I couldn't be there. But um, that's just a blessing that this has turned out like it has. So, Ms. Johnson, how many years have you been our sheriff? 23 years. <laughs> and, pri and prior to that? You're an SBA agent for how many years? years. <laughs> I'm old, go on and say it. <laughs> <laughs> Still county, a youngster. <laughs> this county has vastly improved, particularly in the law enforcement area, thanks to your efforts. Thank you. When we do your portrait, I really want your SBI with the hair. That's what I want. I, want that. I don't want this look, I want that look. <laughs> Mr. Corbin. Um. Chair Paisley and I had an opportunity this morning to uh, cut a ribbon up in Pleasant Grove at the um, at the uh, Pleasant Grove Community Center. Center. Mm -hmm. uh, Meals on Wheels is do has done a, a new convergent lunch location up there mm -hmm. where they will have uh, activities for senior citizens. We had an amazing turnout, probably 30, 40 people, I would say. Yeah. Um, senior citizens in there, just a wonderful time of fellowship, and uh, I mean, you didn't want to leave. Everybody was just welcoming to us and uh, a, a fun time. But a wonderful opportunity for our senior citizens to get additional services in some rural parts of the county. Meals on Wheels intends to do several more similar to that in other rural areas of the county as well. So. Hopefully, we'll see that coming down the pike soon. Mills on Wheels is out of the First Presbyterian Church in Burlington, and they've been doing that since they were organized in 1973 and actually started serving meals and so forth in 1974 and have done it continuously since then. Uh, this site that Steve's talking about, uh, Ms. Carter's talking about, uh, is their fourth site for serving meals. So they continue to expand and do wonderful work. Thank you. Now, I, I don't know if the county can do this. Um, Rick, it's probably against policy, but something needs to be done about the GPS and his BMW. <laughs> I don't say it. My GMC got me there, bam, on time, no problem. <laughs> now, I, I understand there may have been something else going on before his GPS error, but anyway, he finally made it. <laughs> He'd have landed a balloon right in the park. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, trust me. And speaking of trash and things of that sort, flying my hot air balloon in competition, uh, one of uh, you know, the sites that you uh, had on the screen earlier was one of my balloons. Uh, but you see beautiful things. Uh, you get above 80 feet, you get up to 1,000 feet and whatever, you can literally see Pilot Mountain. You can see the Appalachian Mountains on a clear day, um, and so forth. It's just at, so this tower, Brian, that you guys are doing, is a wonderful idea. But you also see the backyard where there's trash, and you see the numbers of cars and the whatever. So uh, you see the good and the bad. Um, I just choose to look at the good. Thank you. Mr. Stevens. Uh, so I know that uh, Manager York and I are usually in a bi-weekly battle to have the shortest comments and, and win the session. I'm going to let her win today. I have a few things to say. Uh, I just wanted to address uh, Commissioner Thompson's concern about some of our code enforcement issues on a countywide level. Um, I, I was pleased when I got here to have inherited what we have as a monthly meeting with um, various departments in the county that are responsible for aspects of that process where we meet and we have a list of ongoing issues that we like to address informally if possible yeah. i will tell you that um, litigation is a stick but it is a slow stick yeah. and it is often not the most effective way to deal with those situations so we are trying to come up with solutions to help people solve those problems 
that don't necessitate me having to go to court and try to convince a judge to let us go on the property involuntarily. Um, up to and including, we have uh, a field trip now that we take uh, about once a month where we go and visit some of these properties and speak to homeowners to figure out what the problem is, what we can do to solve the issue. Uh, and I will tell you that at least in one instance, we were on the guy's front porch. I told him I was the county attorney. I don't think he believed me. He called the office to find out if I was in the office, and our staff had the sense to tell him, no, no, I think he's out in the field. And that property got cleaned up voluntarily. We didn't have to file suit. He knew we meant business. Three weeks later, he sent us photos of his property cleaned up. So we're trying to find ways to do this that don't involve litigation because we don't want to do it. It's not that effective, and it costs us time and money. So we're trying to find solutions, and I understand your concerns, but we're going to try to find creative ways to get there. Uh, and with that said, I do have some closed session motions for you to consider. I can't force you to do anything, of course, but I would ask that you consider going into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A4 uh, to discuss matters relating to location or expansion of industries or other businesses in the area served by the public body, including agreement on a tentative list of economic development incentives that may be offered per the, by the public body in negotiations. And further... Pursuant to the aforementioned general statute subsection A3, I would ask the board move into closed session to consult with an attorney employed by the public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the public body. The attorney will seek instructions on the handling or settlement of administrative matters. That's all I have. I so move that we go into closed session for those two items. Second. Motion is second. All in favor, signify <coughs> by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. We will, shall return. Got lost on his way back to Gaius. Oh, there he is. <laughs> they adjourn without you. <laughs> no, no. So in fact, in fact, he decided to come out way down. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on Local Gov TV. Please go to www.localgov.com tvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on Local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.